question form. Go behind the Iron Curtain USA. There is a great push now for some type of national health service, national health care. The United States is the only Western capitalist country outside of South Africa, if you consider that an advanced Western capitalist country, which doesn't have some type of comprehensive health care system. Are the libertarians for this or are they against it? Well, we're for, we're for a comprehensive health care system and we want everybody to have uh, uh, major medical coverage and the best insurance and the best uh, medical care. That's why medical care has to be delivered by the free market. If we don't care about medical care and quality, if we like lines and if you like the medical care the Indians get, and if you're happy with the Veterans Hospital, and if you're happy with how England runs things in the Soviet Union, then I guess we need another uh, uh, move in the direction of socialized medicine. Government now, even though we don't have a uh, a major uh, national program, government now delivers 60% of the health care in this country. The more we spend, the higher the costs, the lower the quality, less people can get the care. I mean, it's a lousy delivery system. Poor people who can buy their TVs and cars and video cassette recorders have no health care. They buy the VCRs and their television and the cars in the marketplace, they get their health care uh, through government uh, program. With all this spending, there are still 38 million people who have no insurance whatsoever. Just devising another government program, uh, which won't work, but just further push up costs and put controls and more doctors dropping out. And I think it's, uh, it's a total disaster. If it's a national health program run by the government, it's tragic. It won't work. It's going to ruin the care in the country. If uh, we care about people, we will have a national health care program, but it will be delivered by the free market. But the free market is what we have now. We have uh, bad health care. We have a greater percentage of GMP being spent on health care than those places, than those countries where they have a government sponsor. See, I don't, see, I don't agree. I don't think that uh, we have free market medicine. As I said, it's 60% is paid by government. We have coercive rules that force governments into these HMO organizations. Government, uh, you know, the large companies had to offer these things, so they've been growing and now going bankrupt. And uh, when you pump a lot of money in, if government's paying the bills through Medicare or Medicaid, uh, this doesn't spread the money out. A lot of wealthy people get the benefits. The poor people don't seem to get through the, uh, you know, the maze of papers. But a lot of millionaires receive Medicare benefits, so they get their hospital pay payments. But when they go in and pay and have a little insurance, what happens? The hospitals and the doctors and the labs tend to you know jack up the prices so and then the government has to come in and say well we're going to put on controls because the prices are too high and then we're going to ration care so one problem leads uh, leads to the next but the problems you see today are a result of 50 years of uh, ever increasing government intervention in medicine uh, the the government doesn't pay for 60 percent of our automobiles you know but they pay for 60 percent of our medical care the, the automobile prices are high, but they're not as high proportionally speaking. Cost of automobiles is going up at the rate of about 4 or 5% a year. The cost of medical care is going up about 15 or 20%. Government's in, in uh, education. They're in college education. They're always subsidizing college education. Always the guy that doesn't get to go to college has to subsidize the guy that gets to go. The cost of education is going up about 15 to 20%. So as soon as you get government involved, quality does not go up, but the cost goes up and there's not any fair distribution. Where do you stand on the, well, the right to lifers? Are those folks like you, the uh, anti-abortion people like the libertarians? Well, it's mixed. They <laughs> like me uh, because I'm a right to life libertarian. I believe killing a fetus is an act of aggression. I've uh, been forced to be in a room, unfortunately, when I saw a three pound fetus, infant, taken out, breathing and crying and thrown in a bucket. 
I mean, I take my I take my pledge seriously. I mean, that to me looked like an act of aggression. Besides, uh, if I give the wrong medication as a physician to a mother and I damage the fetus, the fetus, when it's born, can sue me. Obviously, it was legal, alive, and human, or it couldn't be able to, wouldn't be able to sue me. I know the fetus determines its inheritance rights at the time of conception. So I'm in uh, I, I'm in uh, disagreement with our platform. Hmm. But uh, there were enough libertarians who agree with my position that I went on the first ballot at our convention. The truth is it's a difficult issue and nobody likes to think about it because the way the law states now under Roe versus Wade, the fetus one second before birth at the weight of nine pounds still has no legal rights and nobody enjoys defending that position. Very difficult because I as a libertarian, I don't like to interfere with the privacy of a woman either. But how are we gonna deal with this? I think we have to have respect for human life or we can't have respect for uh, individual liberty and the right to smoke a cigarette. So you think the government, ha <clears throat> the government has the right to force a woman to carry a fetus full term then? Well, I think the government has the right to protect life. Uh, I, it's sort of like saying if the baby's born and the IQ is 65 and they want it 100, does the government have the right to uh, force that person not to kill their baby? Yes, I do think so. I think the government has a right to protect life, but the government doesn't have the right to force anything. Uh, so it's, uh, it is difficult, uh, obviously. But uh, I think the bottom line is, is killing a fetus an act of aggression. And uh, the only way the libertarians or others who disagree with me on that, would, they would have to say that, uh, no, it's obviously an act of aggression. There's no debate there. It's that the fetus is not a person. The fetus is not alive and it's not human. And I, as a physician, have a lot of trouble with that. I mean, I know it's alive. I know it's human. I know it's legal. So uh, this is very unique, and uh, I don't advocate any federal laws. I don't even, you know, we libertarians nor this system that we have advocated federal laws to uh, uh, deal with uh, theft or murder or anything. You know, it's all handled by the state. So I think that the states would handle it differently. I think courts would handle it differently. I think juries would handle it differently. But uh, I think uh, under my ideal situation, we wouldn't have people having uh, abortion on demand and using it as birth control and having a callous, careless attitude about uh, life and instead of having less illegitimate pregnancies or births, uh, illegitimate or unwanted pregnancies, now it actually, uh, it was intended to help difficult situations. But what it has done is that the teenager sometimes can have three abortions in a year which is sad and it's a tragedy and I've seen the tragedies, I've witnessed them and I have great empathy for them but I also have great respect for the principles of freedom and I don't want to infringe or compromise my concept of what liberty is. What's the libertarian solution to the farm problem? Just free market? Free market, get the government out of it. You know under Ronald Reagan the um, uh, subsidies in 1980 were 10 billion dollars a year. They've gone up to 26 billion dollars a year, and there's just as many bankruptcies as ever. Prices are wildly fluctuating as ever. Uh, I think it'd be much better if we got rid of all the subsidies and gave the farmers steady prices and a sound dollar, low interest rates, prices that didn't jump all over the place, which is a reflection of the dollar's value rather than just commodity values. Obviously, when there's a drought, uh, prices are going to fluctuate more than others, but uh, this whole idea that when pro farmers produce too much, we're supposed to subsidize them. When there's a drought and they produce too little, we're supposed to subsidize them. And now I hear there's an early frost coming. <laughs> and now they're going to have to be bailed out for the early frost. You know, first it's overproduction, and then there's a drought, and then there's an early frost. I think the idea is wrong. I think it's bad economics and morally it's, it's wrong. I mean, uh, I'm having a bad year this year in medicine. I mean, should I ask you to be taxed so that you can send me some money because I'm having a bad medical year or somebody else has a business that doesn't do well? Sure, you can have sympathy and if he's your friend or relative, you can help him if you want. But to be able to coerce a non-farmer to pay him because he needs something or wants something violates all concept of rights. Nobody can demand something and, and call it a right. Everybody has a right to their life and their liberty, but they don't have a right to somebody else's property, and they can't use the government to coerce in order to get it. If you became president, would you abolish the Federal Reserve or try to, since it's a constitutional uh, question also, Well, and try to break the power of the banking system in the country? 
we'd, we'd get rid of the Federal Reserve. But unfortunately, it is a constitutional question, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> the founders were rather clear. They, said they authorized no central bank. Uh, they said we could not emit bills of credit, which is paper money. They said that only gold and silver could be uh, legal tender. And the only monetary function that the Congress had was to mint gold and silver coins. So if we'd follow the Constitution, we would not have a central bank and we would not have a fiat paper currency. We would have a gold or silver standard or both. Uh, we believe that we should have honest money, which is a commodity standard. We don't believe in counterfeiting. We don't believe the individual can counterfeit paper and give it to people and say this is money of real value. But we don't think the politician and the Federal Reserve can do that either. We'd get rid of the Federal Reserve and we think it would not only uh, help the economy, what it would do is it would help the people because the people would save their money again, uh, prices would be lower, interest rates would be lower, and uh, we'd eliminate the business cycle. So the sooner we get rid of the Federal Reserve, the better. How, what would you do about the deficit, this enormous def deficit we have? The deficit should be eliminated by one technique, cutting spending. You can't cut spending until we decide as a people what we want from our government. If we want welfare and warfare, the budget will never be balanced. We're going to have an economic calamity and it's going to be very, very major. If we want some sense to our government, we should balance the budget. We should do it immediately and it should be done by cutting and it should be cut both domestically and internationally. We certainly can cut military spending because a lot of the military spending has nothing to do with national defense. We do not have to sacrifice defense. I believe if we change our policy, we could have a better defense, but we would uh, spend a lot less money, especially overseas. Same way at home. It's too much welfare. We'd cut back on welfare. It's too much interest on the national debt. A sound currency would lower the interest payment. So we would balance the budget and media at a much lower level. I think it would be the greatest thing in the world for the economy. Do you have a last statement you'd like to make for our viewers? Uh, yes, I them. would like to suggest to the viewers that uh, uh, you should uh, look at your choices. I think this year you do have a choice. I think it's foolish to waste your vote. Voting Republican and voting Democrat is a pure waste of your vote. So if you want to vote for less government, if you want to say you're not satisfied with the status quo, then you have to vote Libertarian. If you stay at home, which many people are doing, they're staying at home these days because they are disgusted like we are but they don't think it's much, worth, much chance of changing things. But if you vote Republican or Democrat, it makes no difference whatsoever. If they like what they have, if they're satisfied with the status quo, it doesn't matter. But if you don't want to waste your vote, if you want to make your vote productive, make your vote count, come join the Libertarians, vote Libertarians, send a message because even if we get 5 or 10 or 15 percent of the vote, we will revolutionize politics in this country for the next hundred years. And that's what we want to do. We want to set the stage for the 1990s when the Libertarian Party can be a predominant force in this country. Go behind the Iron Curtain USA.